Dear Lord, we bless your name today. We thank you for all the blessings you bestowed upon us and our families, allowing us to grace this, this, uh, this earth and the blessings you bestowed upon us just to be able to, to breathe and to live and to experience your goodness. Yes. Watch over and guide us as we take part in this worship service today. In your name yes. we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
born in Oak City. I will start with the call to worship. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. forever. We will now have the introduction from hymn number 211. heads and close your eyes for me. Lord Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for waking everyone up here to see another day and just being healthy. Lord Father, we say thank you for the things that we know that you do for us and the things we don't even know are right behind the corner that you have planned for us. Lord Father, we just want to say thank you for just being who you are in our life, the guidance, the protection, and just being God in our life. Lord Father, we can never say thank you enough, Lord Father, because you are the most of, of high. Lord Father, we just thank you. Lord Father, we ask that you bless the mothers today, the fathers, Lord Father, and everyone that is in this church this morning, Lord Father. We ask that you bless the people that have not found their ways to church yet. Lord Father, that you guide them, protect them, and let them know that you are God in their life, Lord Father, that you will be there for them. Lord Father, we ask that you please bless this program, Lord Father, that everything turns out to the best for your liking, Lord Father, and that you move in this building. And Lord Father, we just say thank you, and we give you all the honor there and the glory. now have the responsive reading uh, 597 from brother Dennis Peoples Jr. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading responsive reading taken from Proverbs chapter 4 verses 1 through 4 and 10 through 27. I will read the leader part and you will read the congregation. Here my children the instruction of a father and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not mistake my love. When 
when I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother. He also taught me and said to me, that they find the pain of this teach my commands and live. Hear, my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have told you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in my path. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered, and when you run, you will not stumble. Take very more than the not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it, do not tell it upon me. Turn away from it and tell it upon me. For they do not sleep unless they have done evil, and their sleep is taken away unless they make someone fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of the But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them fall from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. We will now have the morning hymn 162, Pass Me Not. Please allow the waiting worshipers to enter.
we will now have the special tribute from Brother Masingo Dombey Sr. Good morning. Will all the Father here please stand? This morning, I'm going to talk about a great father. A great father makes all the difference in child life. He's the pillar of strength, support, and discipline. His work is endless and oftentimes thankless. But in the end, he shows in the sound well as just children he raises. On Father Day, much of the world will take the time to appreciate the work of great father. While you show your admiration for your own father, take the time to see if you yourself have what it takes to be a great father. Thank you and have a happy Father Day. Uh, we will now have our welcome announcements by Brother Masango Dombey Jr. Good morning. Before I begin the announcements for today, I would like to recognize all the visitors. If you're a visitor, please stand and give your name and church affiliation if you have one. Also, tell us who brought you to church today. Yes, sir. Good morning. My name is Keith Edwards. This is my wife, Teresa. We come from Kingdom Family International Church in Wake Forest. The pastor is Pastor Rodney Frazier and Valerie Frazier. We were invited here today by our son, Cordero Edwards. Yes, ma'am. On behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. William T. Newkirk, and the Oak City family, we welcome you and invite you to come back soon. Oak City, please give our visitors a round of applause. <laughs> These are the announcements for June 19th, 2016. I will not read all of them, so please govern yourselves accordingly. See and share with friends and family Oak City Baptist Church weekly broadcast on Sundays at 7 p.m. on Raleigh Time Water Cable channel 97.6 and channel 22 on AT&T UVerse Digital TV channel 99. Prayer meeting and Bible study will resume on Wednesday, June 29th at 6.30 p.m. due to vacation Bible school this week. The devotional leaders are the Youth Day Committee the Bible study discussion will be LGBT issues in the church, part two. Save the date. We're excited to announce this year's Vacation Bible School, and we look forward to seeing you and your family as we explore joy in Jesus everywhere, all the time. VBS will be held Monday, June 20th through Friday, June 24th from 6.30 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. Classes are available for ages four through adult. Please join us as we explore the joy of Jesus through Bible stories, crafts, music, food, and fun. Everyone is welcome to attend. Meetings to be held today following morning worship service. The missionary ministry will meet in the library after worship service. Missionary Ministry is in need of help at the men's shelter on Tuesday, June 21st at 530. 
The women's ministry will start their session on the Tony Evans book, The Kingdom Woman, on July 2nd at 1130. This book is a complement to The Kingdom Man that was just completed by the men of the church. If you plan to attend, please sign up in the administrative office. The book price will be $10, but please don't let the price of the book keep you from attending. We look forward to those who see you there. Thank you, the women's ministry. I have a card. When I count my blessings, I always think of you. To my Oak City Church family, there are no words that seem adequate enough to say thank you to everyone who expressed their sympathy during the loss of our beloved grandmother. She was a wonderful woman of God, and through the memories that she gave each of us, she will live forever in our hearts. To all the members who sent cards and offered prayers and condolences, I say thank you. To Reverend Newkirk, thank you for the letter you sent offering condolences. Your words are inspirational and was a comfort to us all. Deacon Linwood Fitz and Deacon Richard Jones, your presence at the funeral means more to me than you will ever know. I'm so blessed to have Oak City as my church family because I couldn't be more grateful for the thoughtful things that you do. From Teresa Rascal Figgins and family. Please let us remember our known sick and shut in. Remember them in our cards, calls, and visits. But most of all, let us remember them in our prayers. These are the announcements for today. Thank you and have a blessed week. Good morning. As the, as the ushers will allow the waiting worshipers to enter, we greet you this morning in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We honor our God for his goodness, his mercy, his loving kindness, his everything. Isn't he a wonderful God? Isn't he a wonderful God? Praise the Lord. We honor our worship leader this morning, our Brother Cordero Edwards. Uh, we honor Reverend Pope, who is our speaker for today, and also others who are joining us in the pulpit, my son, uh, Dennis Peoples, Jr., and Isaiah, son of the uh, speaker, and you'll hear from him a little bit later. We honor my fellow, fellow clergy, our deacons, and other leaders, beloved Oak City, our special guests who have come, those who stood and those elected not to stand. We honor all of you. And we particularly want to honor the fathers. Fathers, we thank God for you and uh, your labor of service to your family and to others. And just by being a father, uh, a real father, we thank you for all you do and all you allow the Lord to do in your life. And uh, I just want to say just a word about the history of Father's Day. I was curious about that. And I did a little research. And let me tell you how Father's Day got started. Someone named Grace Clayton was mourning the loss of her father when on December 1907 now, 1907, the monogram mining disaster happened in a town called Monogram. It killed 361 men. 250 of those men were fathers, leaving around 1,000 fatherless children. Clayton suggested her pastor, the Reverend Robert Thomas Webb, would preach a sermon to honor those fathers. That was in 1907. But in 1910, a Father's Day celebration was held in Spokane, Washington. It was held at the YMCA by a woman named Sonora Smart Dobb. She was actually from Arkansas, but she was living in Spokane, Washington. The first celebration was in this YMCA on June 19th, and today is June 19th. June 19th, 1910, her father was a single parent who had raised six children by himself. After hearing a sermon about uh, Mother's Day in 1909, this lady named Smart Dobb told her pastor that fathers ought to have a similar holiday honoring them. She suggested June 5th because that was her father's birthday. And she suggested that pastors in the city 
would preach a sermon on that day, but pastors didn't have enough time. By the time she made the suggestion, they didn't have enough time to put together a sermon. So they put together a sermon and preached it on June 19, 1910, in that entire city of Spokane, Washington, honoring fathers. However, it was not until 1966 that President Lyndon Johnson issued the first presidential proclamation honoring fathers, designating the third Sunday in June as Father's Day. But Congress still didn't approve it. So six years later, Father's Day was made a permanent national holiday by President Richard Nixon in 1972. So it's been just a short while since we've had a national holiday honoring fathers on the third Sunday in June of every year. So fathers, you get the same treatment as mothers now. <laughs> you have a national holiday too. Praise the Lord. Again, we want to say condolences to uh, Sister Figgins and her sister, uh, Sister Tracy Rasco, and the rest of your family as you celebrate the homegoing of your grandmother uh, on Thursday. And let me say something about the grandmother that we are honoring, that they honored, Sister Mary Magdalene Rasco. She was 89 years old. She had 15 children, 11 of which were still, are still living. From those 15 children, there are 42 grandchildren. From the 42 grandchildren, there are 71 great-grandchildren. And from those 71 great-grandchildren, there are 14 great-great-grandchildren. What a wonderful legacy to leave behind. Amen. What a wonderful family. They probably filled the whole church up by themselves. <laughs> I understand they can sing, too. They had members of the family providing music for the service, and Deacon Fitz told me there's some singing people. I want to thank Deacon Fitz and Deacon Jones for representing Oak City and traveling to be with the family. And Sister Fitz, we'll continue to pray for you and your family. Thank you for that wonderful card. We also want to express condolences to Sister Mary Austin, her mom passed away. Her mom was 91 years old, Miss Alice Spence. Her homegoing service be held tomorrow at the Basil Creek Missionary Baptist Church in Fuquay, Verena. Uh, the visitation will start at 1130 and the service at 12. Uh, the grandchildren, also members of our church, at least two of them, Rodney and Rhonda. Rhonda, as you know, is in the movies. Uh, she's in acting and so forth. Right now she's in Louisiana, I believe, doing a television series, but uh, we want to say condolences to the entire family uh, as they celebrate the homegoing of their mother on tomorrow. On Friday night, thank you for coming out for our praise and worship service. We had a wonderful service preached by Reverend Timothy Lucas. What a friend we have in Jesus. He mentioned two expectations. Examine your list of friends and don't take your friends for granted. We had a wonderful time on Friday night. I want to thank all of you who were here. And also our youth choir, represented by Sean McNair, <laughs> on Friday night. Uh, and then the adults, of course, helped them out. But we want to thank all of you for coming out on Friday night. Vacation Bible School is upon us. Uh, that's a high time in the life of our church. Uh, vacation Bible School, and we all get together and learn together and have fun together. Uh, there'll be two adult classes. There'll be other classes for every age group, beginning at age four. Uh, we're going to have a high time beginning tomorrow. We'll start officially at 6.30 and end around 8 or so. And the topic that we have for the adult class is Journey to Joy. Jesus is the strength for life. I know all the classes will be talking something about journeying, and uh, we're going to have a good time, so please come out. We normally have uh, 50 people in the, in the adult class that I teach, and uh, we're looking for your presence on tomorrow evening. We do need men who can stay today uh, here at the church. After we have the benediction, please stay and assist us in setting up tables and chairs for the various classes. 
So if you're able to stay for a few moments, uh, help us set up, and then you can take off for your Father's Day celebration. <laughs> but stay, if you will, and help us celebrate, uh, set up for Vacation Bible School for all the various classes. Our prayer list is about the same. Uh, lift up Trustee Ella Bird, Sister Deaconess Capernia Crome, who is over at the uh, Pruitt Rehab, Sister Diane Crosby, Sister Daisy Pegos, who's at Raleigh Rehab, uh, and the families who are in bereavement. The non-members, we're still praying for Sister Mary Lou Cobb, Sister Maxine Cobb, Sister Lena Miller, uh, the child Malia Sorrell, Brother Lamont Thompson, Sister Margaret Williams. We've added Sister Sharon Jones, who's a cancer patient in New York. And also, I have a cousin who's been in intensive care for the past week, Clarence Sidbury in Detroit, Michigan. And he is just out of intensive care and making progress. We want to lift him up in prayer. There are about 12 to 15 others we're praying for, but they are the most worst off. Want to say happy birthday to uh, Sydney, who is my granddaughter on tomorrow, celebrating a birthday. Praise the Lord. Sydney is here today, college student in Winston Salem. On the 24th, Sister Donna Anderson and Deaconess Veronica Smith. Is Sister Smith here today? Praise the Lord. There she is. All right. She has a birthday as well. And Sister Donna Anderson, uh, one of our music directors. And then on the 25th, Sister Linda Lucas, who is with her husband today as they are celebrating with their dad, uh, Reverend Lucas' dad. Uh, They're celebrating with him today. And Sister Loray Buico. Praise the Lord. She also is here. Happy birthday. Are there other visitors who have a birthday this week from today, between today and next Saturday? Any visitors with a birthday? Well, I look out and I see Sister Foy here and her husband. It's good to have you all with us and all the other visitors who are here today. We thank God for your presence. I see uh, Sister Capricia here as well. God bless you. The anniversaries, there are many, but this is the month of June. You know people get married in the month of June more than any other month. Uh, Trustee Michael Sams and Sister Sheila Sams, who's one of our directors for the Vacation Bible School, they are here. Uh, Trustee Sams, we let you stand. I know Sister Sam is not feeling too well, so tell us which one this is. Give them a big hand. 24 years. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Deacon Michael Dunstan, who is not singing today, but he's here. And also Deaconess Barbara Dunstan. Will you all please stand? Deacon Dunstan, will you let us know how many this will be? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Give them a big hand. <laughs> Big hand, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. <laughs> That's on June 22nd now. June 24th, uh, Trustee Presty Bradley and Sister Sheila Bradley, who's ushering today. Trustee Bradley in the choir, I believe. Which one is this, Trustee Bradley? <laughs> Number 10, give them a big hand, praise the Lord. Still on your honeymoon, too? <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. And the 20, uh, June 25th, Trustee Danford Murphy, all these trustees, <laughs> Trustee Danford Murphy and Sister Clara Murphy, the brother Dan is, uh, Trustee Dan is ushering this morning. Trustee Dan, which one is this? <laughs> How many? 21. 21 years. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you can tell he's still his honeymoon too praise the lord <laughs> all right congratulations to all of you may god bless you to have many many more as i take my seat let me say how proud i am to be a father how proud i am of my children uh, all of them are here or will be here today we plan to be together this afternoon for a while i'm so proud of my grandchildren so proud of my God children. God has blessed me Amen. beyond my wildest dreams. You never know how much you're loved. Love you so much. Bless you.
We will now get ready for offertory prayer by our brother James Jones. And then following that, we will have the Lord's tithes and offering. If you're able to stand, would you please stand and bow your heads? This morning, our Heavenly Father, we come before you again. We count it as a blessing to be here. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for all of the things that you've done for us. And we ask you to bless this offering. Bless it that it may be used to, for the uplifting of your kingdom. These and all other blessings we ask in thy son Jesus' name. Amen. We will now have the divine reading by Trustee Patrick Miner, followed by the morning prayer from Deacon Michael Dunstan Sr. Good morning. Good morning. Turn your attention to the screens. We will read the divine reading in unison this morning. Coming from Proverbs, the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 9. Uh, through nine. 
The preparations of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. Commit your works to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. The Lord has made all for himself, yes, even the wicked for the day of doom. Everyone proud in his heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though they join forces, none will go unpunished. In mercy and truth, atonement is provided for iniquity. But the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. In mercy, when a man ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little righteousness than vast revenues without justice. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Amen. Amen. Let us bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you the only way we know how. That's full of gratitude and with praise on our lips. Father, we're grateful because you saw that we were dead in sin with no hope for tomorrow, but you sent your only begotten son. We were blind, but now we can see. We were lost, but now we are found. And we praise you, Father. We praise you, Father, because you are holy, because you are righteous, because of your goodness and your loving kindness. We praise you, Father, because you can make a way out of no way. We praise you, Father, because you are our battle axe. We praise you, Father, because we can talk with you and walk with you and tell you all about our troubles. We praise you, Father, because you are everything that we have hoped for and you are everything that we need. Father, we praise you for this new day that only you can make. We praise you, Father, for our sustenance, our food, our clothing, and our shelter. And we praise you, Father, for holding this universe in place that we might walk around and witness the marvelous creations that you have made. We praise you, Father, that we have this branch of Zion to come to, to worship you in spirit and truth, and that we have the freedom to do such. We praise you, Father, for this Father's Day. And we thank you for all fathers. We pray that you might strengthen them and lift them up, Father, because we all know our homes and our fathers are being attacked more and more every day. But we know you are able to deliver, Father. And we pray, Father, that we will use you as an example of a father. And we pray, Father, even for the fatherless this morning. Father, we ask that you might bless this service today. We continue to thank you for your grace and your mercy. Father, we ask that you might bless the speaker of the hour. Lift him up, Father, so that you might see him, be seen. Let each one of us get exactly what we need from this message, that we might go out so that our light might shine, so that we might bring others to you. And then, Father, we know that some have come this morning with special needs. Some have come with sickness in their body. Some have come, Father, that are challenged with their resources. Some have even come, Father, that may not know you for the pardon of their sins. But, Father, let them know that you are a healer. Let them know that you own the cattle on a thousand hills. Let them know, Father, that you are a counselor. Let them know, Father, that you are everything that they need. Just give them, Father, the faithfulness and the mindfulness to put their hands in your hands. And then, Father, after we've done these things, we pray, Father, that you will continue to lead us and guide us. And that when we go out, we can speak of you and all the great things that you have done. In Jesus' name.
we will now have the introduction of our speaker, Brother Isaiah Pope. Good morning, Note City. Good morning. I've had the pleasure to introduce your special speaker, but my father, Reverend Michael J. Pope. My dad was born July 7, 1955 in Raleigh, North Carolina. His parents are the um, late Joseph and Lillian Pope. He's married to my beautiful mother, Aline C. Chavis. Um, his children are Michael Jr., Latanya, Cecilia, Teresa, and yours truly, the one and only, Isaiah and Adrika. He's a proud grandfather of five boys and four girls. His education includes M.B. Broughton Senior High School. He graduated June 1973. His ed educational background includes U.S. Marine Troops, Field Radio Operations, and Communications. He graduated December 1974 with a top secret clearance in radio, wire, and teletype communications. St. Augustine College Bu Business Management Program, 1979 through 1981. UNC Greensboro, 1994. North Carolina Star Teach and Reach class certifies a meditation facilitator. North Carolina State University summer class in Hebrew. Southern Baptist State Theological Seminary, 1993 through 1995, Associate of Divinity Program. American Fitness Association, Certified Teacher of Exercise and Aerobics. His accomplishments are Associate Minister of Oak City Baptist Church, licensed to preach January 1999, founder of Self-Awareness Outreach Ministry, Incorporated, 1982 Project Include Catch Me Before I Fall Workshop for at-risk youth and young adults, kids in need holiday event to give away clothes, toys, school supplies, provide community service time and credit for projects for those assigned by the Wake County Court System. Founder of Problem Solver, a conflict resolution program. Founder of ISO Size, a fitness ministry. Gifted writer and director of several plays. One is Don't Give Up on the Children, performed at NC State Stewart Theater, music provided by Danny Woods of Chairman of the Board. Certified May 2001 by the General Baptist State Convention of North Carolina to the Office of Inter Institutional and Specialized Ministries by Reverend Michael Smith. Certified ambassador through UNC Community Network and Stanford University to teach all Alzheimer's, Quranic, and Quranic health disease, diabetes, and prostate cancer self-management screening statewide. Numerous awards in, sp in sports, self-awareness, self-defense, and also received the Fred, Fred J. Fletcher Volunteer Award. My dad's testimony is I'm a man of God with very strong faith. I know that I'm a blessed man of God because of the many close encounters with death, and yet I am still here to be a witness for God in many in any means necessary. I pattern my life by Psalms 23 and Psalms 90, verse 12. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And I would also like to say that I love you to death, and I can't ask for no better from you. Thank you, Isaiah. Um, now we have the special selection from the male choir. After following the male choir, you will be able to hear the Reverend Michael Pope Sr. I got to ask for your help this morning. <clears throat> I was at the doctor Thursday, and for the last two or three weeks, I've been having problems with uh, infection in the throat. But if you pray for me and pray with me, we're going to try to get this over, all right?
like the doors of progress have closed in your face. And no matter what you do, your friends don't appreciate. I tell you what you do, you just still on wait. I go down on your knees. that one more time. When they say, I like the doors of progress and flow in your face. And no matter what you do, no friends don't appreciate. I tell you what you do, you just feel the I go down on your knees. Listen now, listen. Now the right way is a narrow way, and it don't have no crooks and bends. Since I started on this Christian journey, I found out Jesus, my only friend. I tell you what you do, you just feel away. I go down on your knees. Hey, I want you to see, listen, now the right way is a narrow way, and they don't have no crooks and bends, since I started on this Christian journey, I found out Jesus was my only friend, I tell you what you do, you just steal. Come on, please, Lord. I said, Come on, please, Lord. I said, Come on, please, Lord. I said, Come on, please, Lord. Is it anybody here ever called on Jesus? Is it anybody here ever called on the Lord? I just got one question, then I leave it alone. I said, I won't God make a way. 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 I said, come on, please, Lord. I said, come on, please, Lord. I said, come on. Come on, please, Lord. I said, 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 come on, please, Lord. Is there anybody here ever called on Jesus? Anybody here ever called on the Lord? I just got one question, and then I'll leave it alone. I said, I won't God make a way. 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 I said, come on, please, Lord. I said, come on, please, Lord. I said, 
Come on. I want you to see, see about me. I said, come on. Please, Lord. Come on, come on, please, Lord. Come on, 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 is it anybody here ever called on the Lord? I just got one question, then I'll leave him alone. I said, I won't God make a way. 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 I said, come on, please, Lord. Come on, please, Lord. I said, 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 come on. Come on, please, Lord. I want you to see, see about me. Come on and see about me. Come on, Jesus. Come on and see about me. Good morning, Oak City. Everyone under the sound of my voice, giving all glory and honor to God for allowing this servant to stand here this day to still be a witness for his goodness. To our honorable pastor for allowing me to borrow his sacred desk for a few moments. I say once again to you all, thank you for sharing your time. Just thank you for sharing your love. Thank you for being here this day to share Father's Day with us all. I just thank God for making it all possible. I heard the scripture reading that came from Proverbs. I first want to take time to thank all friends and family that have come. Uh, to my beautiful wife, <laughs> my second boss. Man, you know, our first boss is God, but the second one is always, you know. <laughs> No, we thank God for it all. Amen. Coming from Proverbs 16, verses 1 through 9, I want to lift up verse 9. A man's mind plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. Leading us to our title of my message for this day, What Makes a Man a Father? What Makes a Man a Father? Pray with me for a moment. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, God, once again for this day. I thank you, Father, for who you are. The way you lifted up this servant. You picked me from the garden, Father. You planted my feet on a rock. You guide my steps. You punish me when I need to be punished, oh God. And but yet you love me in my down times. And I just thank you for who you are. Let your words be my words, your thoughts be my thoughts. That everything I say and do here will glorify you. In Jesus' precious name I do pray. Amen. A man's mind plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. What is a father? A male, a male parent or guardian. Emphasis on male parent or guardian. 
a God-fearing man, proud, respectful provider, protector, humble, caring, compassionate, fair, fair with his love and his punishment, and fair with his support, has strong family values, totally committed to serving God and family. Man. Genesis 9-1 tells us then that, then God blessed Noah and his son, saying to them, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. Because at this time, God had gotten angry with his creation. And he was at a point of destroying it all. But yet he found favor in a few. The same way he finds favor today in a few of us. From the beginning of the world, the creation of Adam and Eve, God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Then God gave man control. The fear and dread of you, he said, will fall upon all the beasts and all the birds of the air, upon every creature that moves along the ground and all the fish of the sea. They are given into your hands, he said. But church, what happened to that fear and respect today, man? I don't see any beasts of the field or anything in the sea running to us unless they plan to make us their next meal. I don't know about y'all. God permitted man to pray on the animal kingdom, not on one another. So again, I ask, what happened? We see people attacked by sharks. People hear people attack, being attacked by bears. People attacked by deers even, as much as they go deer hunting, still there are deers that are attacked back. Kids been attacked by alligators and people killing each other for no reason. Again, I ask, what happened? For you see men, as fathers, married or not, taking care of your children or not, one of the biggest mistakes we could ever make is forgetting to reach out, to reach back and invest in our families today, amen? We spend so much time and money on things and people that we want to impress and forget all about the gifts and talents that lie within our own family members. Now I know that family may be our biggest critic sometimes, because my wife was just on me this morning, making sure that I didn't keep y'all here all day. <laughs> so instead of six hours, we'll be here for two. <laughs> but when it's all said and done and everyone that we tried to impress is gone, I want to ask you, think about this. Family is all we got left. So we need to be real careful on who we turn our backs on and who we really pay attention to, amen? amen? For you see, it's easy to go to God on man's behalf, but to go to man on God's behalf is not an easy thing to do, man. You see, it's easy to front, to use slang, to use curse words and gibberish, trying to look and sound good before the people, saying words that don't mean anything, but to put your pride aside and go to another man to talk about God, even to our sons and daughters, this takes a special boldness received only from God when we believe in him and call on him to lead and guide us, our thoughts and our actions. In order for us to become good fathers men, we must go through a transitional phase that may lead us to becoming a sacrificial lamb, just like Jesus. When Jesus said, pick up your cross daily, daily, daily and follow me. He was letting us know that our daily journey was not going to be the same every day, nor was it going to be always easy or fun. So being a male with all your right body parts don't make you a man. It don't make you a father. It don't make you a good leader. It don't make you a good boyfriend. It don't make you a good husband even. A seed planter maybe, but not a man or a father just a male. Amen? So you see, God's covenant with us and God's creation of us 
puts us both in a prestigious but an awkward position because we are to become creators through our seed, the nurturing of that seed. See, there's a responsibility that comes with it all. The encouraging and protecting and providing for that seed, loving that seed unconditionally, and willing to die for that seed and others in our care. In our October passage this morning, as a pastor, for some reason today, I've had a crying day. Men don't cry often, especially in front of people. But it's a cleansing time. And there are times when your heart is right. It's going to happen. You know, and he said, that's all right. It's going to happen. It needs to happen. So if y'all see me break down, just keep praying for me. <laughs> we wear a crown, gentlemen. But it's not on our heads. It's in our hearts. Through our actions, the love we show, the service that we give. We stand up, men, even when we're tired. We step up, even when we feel like we're not ready. We step out, even when we know that we're all alone. We build up. We don't tear down. So how do we get to this point in our life, Evan Pope? I'm glad you asked. Becoming a mature Christian, man, is a process of growth. You're, not, you're born again, but not physically. You go through a process called spiritual transformation and baptism. Then you, like a newborn baby, you gradually grow up in Christ. You may look at other Christians, mature Christians that we see every day around us, and you ask or may think, why can't I be like them? not knowing what it took for them to get to that point in their life. We may look like we're successful. We may look like we're strong and we got it going on. We may look like we don't have a problem in the world. But when you can really open up that book and look at all the ugly, rough times that they went through, then you will say to yourself probably, I don't want to go down that road. But don't be discouraged. Don't, be, don't get impatient. We must grow in manhood, men. Grow in manhood into fatherhood in stages as we grow and mature from childhood to adulthood. By using the means that God provides for us, allowing God to lead us, he can change you into what he wants you to be. God gives us motivation. He gives us guidance. He gives us encouragement. And all we have to do is be determined to follow his will and let his spirit guide us through each and every day of our different phases of life. Amen? Amen. Which is all we know. And as we all know, that it's not an easy thing to do. We pray to God and ask for guidance. Ask God to lead us. But we can't easily turn away, turn, away, turn or loose those reins and let God lead. It's hard to just let him have it all, but we have to. God gives us the tools we need, but it's up to us to use them. Now, I read in one of Joel Osteen's books, the one entitled Becoming a Better You, about some famous racehorses, the ones that run the Kentucky Derby and some of the other prestigious races. Now, I never realized that it took so much time and effort and resources to create a champion horse, but it does. These are not ordinary horses. They're thoroughbreds. They have generation after generation of born winners because they're trainers, they're breeders, and they're veterinarians. They check the data banks, the statistics, and the information to find out what the bloodlines of these animals are so they can be matched up with the right ones, so they can be nurtured and trained just right. That's why the owners are not concerned about the baby coach. You know, when they come out, their legs look real weak and flimsy. Their initial weakness is not a problem or concern because the owner know that deep inside of their coat lies the bloodline of a winner. Now, church, I'm saying this because men, especially, that's how God looks at us. 
Our external appearance to him is irrelevant. It doesn't matter how many weaknesses or flaws we have. It don't matter the color of my skin or yours. It don't matter how big or how small you are. He wants you to know. He wants you to know. He wants you to know that you have the DNA of an almighty God. Amen? And you came from a bloodline of champions. Before we look at our natural ancestors, I would like for all the men in this place to please stand. And as you stand, I want you to look as if you're looking into your mirror at home and you dress. Could be your bathroom mirror, could be the one you dress in your dressing room. And I want you to say these words. I am a winner, am a winner. created by an almighty God. Almighty God. I, will I will never give up again. I will never give up again. I will never give up again. Amen. Thank you. May we see that. I said that because, men, we don't let ourselves know enough who we are. We don't tell ourselves enough that we are somebody, that God has created me to do great things. He's created me to lead, not just my family unit, but everything and everybody that he places in my path to touch. My biological father gave up on me. But thank God he gave me a father who never knew the meaning of the word quit. As a double amputee, he crawled around on his knees and served my mother and his community until he died. He received the Jefferson Award for his courage and his service. This church is blessed, Oak City, with winners each one of you that stood up, you have the bloodline of champions and winners flowing through you. Each one of you here, from the pastor to the pew, Oak City, we are winners. We are winners. Moses parted the Red Sea, showing great faith in your bloodline. Amen? Now think about walking across that sea. If you look at the walls of this structure here, think how far you had to walk. And if you didn't have the faith in the structure, like they had the faith in God, the way we're supposed to have faith in God every day, you'd be afraid to step inside this place because you would think everything's going to collapse down on top of you. That's faith in our bloodline. Amen? Amen. David, the shepherd boy, defeated Goliath, the giant with a few pebbles that he picked up. Now, we've all thrown rocks at each other, at cars and other people. But you know, a rock only do but so much damage. But David, with these pebbles, defeated a nine foot, 600 pound monstrosity of a man with one single shot, showing courage in your bloodline. Men, Samson toppled a building showing supernatural strength in your bloodline. David spent an entire night in the lion's den and wasn't hurt. That shows divine protection flows through your bloodline. Nehemiah rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem when all the odds were against him. That shows determination and persistence. Pulsating through your bloodline. You know, men, sometimes we give up too quick and too easily. Just because somebody may look at you wrong or say, you ain't going to make it. It's not up to them. It's not up to them. Man never has the last say over your life. Wow. Queen Esther put her life on the line and saved God's people. That shows heroism and sacrifice in your bloodline. Now, I recognize Queen Esther because even though she's not a man or a father, y'all know, as well as I do, that moms today have to step up to the plate when weak daddy, sorry daddy, or no daddy is anywhere to be found. Amen? Amen. So I hope it's all right with y'all because I give credit where it's due. 
Sometimes when we're too weak to lead, somebody has to do it. And credit goes out to all the strong mothers out there, grandmothers that take the place of the fathers that don't know how to be fathers. You run around and cry, this is my baby, but you're not doing anything to take care of that baby. This child said, I've never seen my father in 15 to 20 years, but yet you can say that's my child. How well do you know that child? The one main thing I want to bring out here is that you come from a bloodline of champions, men. Not a one of you here is an ordinary person. You're all thoroughbreds in God's eye. No matter what your present condition is, inside of each one of you flows the blood of a winner because you're born from the seed of an almighty God. Amen? So stop focusing on your weaknesses and get a bigger vision for your life and the life of your family. David said to God, all the days of my life were ordained by you before one of them came to be. Now what does that tell you about God and you? When you were just a seed, God knew your destiny. He had a plan for each one of you. So why are you going to come out to be any other thing than what he wants you to be? God has control. In other words, you may be 30 or 60. God's been working on you for a long time. And I know he's still working on me because you're very valuable to him. And he's destined for each one of you to live in victory. God gives us free will, church. So don't keep throwing away your blessings. Don't keep missing your blessed opportunities by making bad choices, making wrong choices, following people who aren't going anywhere in life. Following a society that believes more in man than in God. Amen. Amen. You see the trouble going on around us today. The destruction. Floods where floods never went before. Buildings falling down. Even the highways. You can ride down the road and suddenly a hole will appear in this man-made structure. Bottom line is, men, know who you are. Most of all, know whose you are. So you can teach your kids and others that they are somebody. And they are born winners also. Amen. Amen. And young people, when you look at yourself and you begin to realize that you have special gifts and talents and abilities, when you hear others say that you are talented, know that you have the blood of a winner flowing through your veins. And never let anyone tell you what you can't do in life that you're going to be a failure because God didn't allow you to be born into this world for you to fail. When Abraham needed a son, God worked it out, church. When Moses needed encouragement because of his speaking, God worked it out, church. When Moses needed the Red Sea open, God worked it out. When David had to face Goliath, God worked it out. When Paul was knocked down off that horse and lost his sight, God worked it out. He turned a murderer into a saint. So just think what he can do with you and me. When Peter needed saving after taking his eyes off Jesus, God worked it out, church. When he went to sleep on Jesus, knowing he was supposed to be watching, God worked it out. Even after denying to know Jesus to save himself, God still had grace and mercy on his wretched soul. God worked it out, church. When Jesus allowed himself to be the ultimate sacrifice for us all, God worked it out. Now you and me, we are here today, church, because of God worked out our problems so that we could have this day, this time, to glorify him and thank him for giving us his grace and his mercy. Amen. God is still working it out. The steps of a good man, church, are ordered by God. So are the steps of a father. So are the steps of a father. <sighs> Do you mind if I testify? Tell you of the goodness of my Lord. Share some of what he's done for me. 
how he's opened up so many doors. You might look at me from the outside and think I've got you on my own, but there's no way that you could ever know <laughs> how much grace and mercy I've been shown. God worked it out, church. And he's still working it out. Be blessed. If there's someone this morning who has not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, we've heard a great message about what God can do, what God will do. You need to have the Lord in your life if you don't have him already. So if there's someone today who has not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we invite you to come and receive him today. If by chance you're looking for a church home, a place where you can serve the Lord, a place where you can grow in the Lord, we invite you to come. Give Oak City a try. Hook up with us. Let us grow together. You can come by a letter. You can come as a candidate for baptism. You can come by Christian experience. You can come and join by watch care. So the male course is going to prepare to give us our invitational selection. After hearing this great message, and even on Father's Day, why not come and give your life to the Lord? Stand with me, please. Stand with me as the choir sings. about that Father's Day message. I just want to take a couple of minutes to say thank you to everyone who came out today for Father's Day. Um, I definitely want to give a big thanks to, first let me all stand by Reverend Newkirk, First Lady, Reverend New Ms. Newkirk, um, the church, the Re associate ministers. Um, I want to give a special thanks to Reverend Pope my father-in-law for giving this Father's Day um, sermon. It really, really meant a lot to me. Um, if you can't stand up, come up here for a second. We just want to give the members from the Father's Day Committee wants to bless you with that and just say thank you very much for everything you've done for us. Thank you. I want to take a moment and ask everyone who had helped us out for this uh, Father's Day committee, if you're part of the board, also if I ask you to help in and step up to do something special for me, please stand at this present point in time. I want to thank two special people that blessed me yesterday or throughout this process um, a lot. Um, Dennis Peoples, um, I want to say thank you a lot for coaching me, for the phone calls, the text messages, the, the prayers, and just being able to help us out. Um, you took your time yesterday and came out and cooked for everyone who attended the kickball game. Um, even though he had a prior engagement to do, he actually made time to fit us in to help us out. 
And I just want to say thank you for everything you helped me do. Amen. We had a special guest yesterday come to the kickball game, and I don't think she knows how much she helped us out yesterday with her presence. Um, First Lady Miss Newkirk, I thank you very much for coming out yesterday. Um, just being able your presence there was felt by everybody. We knew you had a lot of things to do yesterday, and we just appreciate you coming out and just laughing and joking with us. And just by just making everyone, even down to your grandson, feel very special yesterday. Um, but I also want to give one more big special thanks to my wife. Um, for being there helping me through this whole process. Uh, this is the first time I've ever done something like this for the church. Um, I didn't know I was going to be doing this, but just being able to be blessed by God and having a wife beside you to help you through the week with the phone calls, with helping us get the park, um, helping us just make arrangements, I and mean, just being there to support me uh, through this process. Um, I just want to say thank you. And the most important man of the hour, Reverend Newkirk. We just thank you for everything that you've blessed me to be able to get together and have this kickball game, being able to pull other people in different directions, and just being there to help me out whenever I need you. Thank you very much. Uh, my team, if you're on my team, we won the kickball game yesterday. Let's give Brother Edwards a big hand. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Evans, for your leadership and for your unique way of doing things. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We thank God for you and your family. Uh, I, too, want to take a moment to thank Reverend Pope for letting the Lord use him this morning. Didn't the Lord use him in a mighty way this morning? <laughs> I didn't know if he'd make it all the way through uh, because uh, there were some emotional moments in his message. What makes a man a father? Uh, thank you for sharing God's word with us from Proverbs and then making it real. Thank you for making it real because uh, every person who brings a life into this world is not a father, is not a real man. And I say to any child who does not have a father, God will place someone in your life. Uh, to help you and God is also your father so you have a father as long as there's a God in heaven you've got a father and God will send someone else in your life to help you through the trials and tribulations of this life so don't despair don't be discouraged don't hold your head down you look up because God's got something special for you to do some of the greatest people in this world came from single family homes and Jesus himself was an adopted child when you think about it we thank God for fathers who are real fathers and thank you Reverend Pope again for that great message I want to thank the entire committee also uh, my son who was uh, the vice chair working with Brother Codera, Codera. They work well together. I want to thank him as well for the cookout on yesterday. I was there for a short while and had to leave, but I had a chance to get a couple of good hot dogs. <laughs> and uh, so I thank him for that. Uh, is everything okay? I, I don't know if someone is sick or what. I saw a lot of commotion going on. Uh, is anybody ill? Because I want to pray for them if they are ill. Is anyone ill? Yeah, my daughter, they're getting ready to put in labor. All right, all right. Well, we'll be praying for uh, Camille, Camille, Kamika. Kamika. Kamika, who's uh, with child and uh, is about to go in labor, and we'll be praying for her before we leave. All right. Praise the Lord. So we thank God for all of you being here today. We're going to say our closing prayer now uh, before we go, and then we'll have the benediction. Again, stand with me. 
give Reverend Pope and the Lord a hand for a great message and a great day. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you will, bow your heads with me, and Dr. McGregor, if you'll play softly for me, and then we'll have our closing. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this great message we've heard today. We thank you for the fathers who are real fathers and for men who are real men. We thank you, O oh God, for our worship leader today, Brother Edwards, and all of those who make up the Father's Day Committee. We thank you for these families who have gathered here today and how you have blessed us and how you are still blessing us. We ask that you might smile down upon all fathers across this land and bless us as we spend the rest of this day uh, celebrating your goodness. Remember Kamika, O oh God, and be with her as she uh, goes into labor, as she's about to bring another child into the world. We pray that you might cover her, be with her husband, and be with the grandparents and the rest of the family, the child who's already here, young April. Just bless her, O oh God, and be with her now, and bless others on this prayer list that we've called, the names we've called already, the names you know about and we didn't call. Bless us now, O oh God, as we dismiss us this from this service, but never dismiss us from your presence. And we'll give you all the praise, all the honor and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Shake somebody's hand before leaving. God bless you.